when I wrote Mass Cow, I was in Professor Zanana's autobiography class. And she asked the student, she said, what do you want to do in this class? And it was natural to me to come out and say, you know what, I want to write about my experience overseas. But the year was just too long to just encompass everything in you know, so few pages. So this particular incident stuck out in my head. And I was like, you know what, I want to write about that. It was one of the most rigorous, most intense days of all the 365 days that I was out there. It was one of the, the worst things and just really hectic that I've ever experienced. Like I, like I said in the, in the piece, you know, there's never anything so serious that I've ever undertaken ever in my life, you know, just to see, you know, these, these men come in, you know, we're, the hospital's already full as it is. We have more patients than we have beds. And these guys come off of a really harsh attack. Um, they were attacked a couple of miles out of uh, our forward operating base. And they came in all kinds of ways. The, the, the back story to, to Mascal is um, these guys were on patrol and they happened upon an IED. What came about was a couple of dead Iraqi National Guardsmen and several injured Iraqi National Guardsmen and a few soldiers that were injured in blast also. So when we went outside to receive uh, these soldiers, it was about two Humvees and three ambulances from the, uh, the, uh, what was it? The, the Red Crescent Corps. Just like our Red Cross, they have Red Crescent. So they had their, uh, their guys come in with, with their soldiers. Our guys came in with their soldiers and our soldiers. And we're running outside with all these stretchers. We're grabbing soldiers, we're putting them on the stretchers, we're trying to bring them into the emergency room, triage, saying he could wait, he can go, he's about to die. I mean, these are what the doctors are doing, and we're trying to, you know, go with what they're saying. Okay, we're going to put this guy to the side. Okay, we're going to treat him. We're going to bandage him up, and we're going to get this guy to the OR now. And you have all this stuff. It's just controlled chaos. You know, anyone who's never, and I've never worked in a trauma unit. My civilian job, I was an instrument technician. I work with the instruments. I don't do anything other than clean them and prepare them for the docs to use. And I never had gotten into the OR. You know, like I've trained for the OR, but I never really worked in it in the civilian side. And this was hit the ground running, you know, guts to the wall, kind of, you know, just really immersing yourself, getting down and dirty into your training. So everything that I had learned from my previous uh, school, school experience from the Army just kicked in. How to bandage correctly, how to, you know, apply the appropriate pressures, you know, ventilating properly, making sure mass is on correctly, you know, not doing more injuries to the patient, you know, everything just kind of just clicked and it just, it felt natural. I didn't have to think about it, I just did it. And it was very instinctual. The experience that, that I take from it, 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 it's hard to not feel so intense ab about uh, being there. It, it's, it's unlike anything you would experience here in the States. There, there's nothing here that uh, could, could, could just get your adrenaline going and have you just constantly wary, constantly being alert and hypersensitive to things. And it's, it's an environment of just pure intensity where you're always on alert and you're always on guard. And it affects you. It affects you mentally, it affects you physically, it affects you emotionally. Um, everything that you do, everything you say, you know, is done with purpose. You know, here you're, it's a lot more laid back. You know, you have time to think about things. You have time to do things. When you're in a combat zone, you can't do that. You can't afford, you know, to just think. You have to do. You have to act. You have to be constantly ready and be instinctual about things. There's no hesitation. You just do. When you're set to act, you have to go. And that's just what it is. After the experience, I feel very changed as a person. I don't see things um, the same way I did before I left. I have this huge appreciation of life, of the freedom that I have here in the States. Um, just to be able to do what I want, how I want to do it, when I want to do it. Um, small things that may bother people you know, long lines at the supermarket, you know, waiting at the DMV, you know, just
things that would normally just tick people off, like I, I take it with a grain of salt. I'm just like, you know, it could be a lot worse. It really could be. Um, the second part, who I will become, I don't know yet. You know, it's one of those things that it's really funny. Um, before I left, I was, I don't know, I guess I was more jovial, I was more jokey, you know, I didn't really take life too seriously, I was a lot more, uh, I, was, I felt, I don't know, I guess like a teenager, or well, I don't know how to describe it, but, you know, I just, I wasn't that, uh, that serious about things, and now after going through it, I probably matured like 10 years, <laughs> you know, and in, in, in going through it, and um, it makes me more focused about what I want, what I want to do. Um, I know that it made me a better person um, just in terms of being more responsible to myself, more responsible towards my family, uh, to my wife, uh, to my friends. You know, I just have this, I, I guess, like a sense of duty to myself to see my education to the end and, and really stick to finishing college and, and, and making sure that I become the professional that I always thought I could be and now, to me, I know I could be.